Receiving QO100 cheaply, can it be done? By Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. Now it's been a little bit low on the upload front because obviously I've been busy with work and other things as well. And obviously I've got to be aware that they may offer me overtime. They actually offered me overtime today as well, but I had to not take it because it was very last minute. So, you know, I'd already made plans. So in this video, we, we should be looking at if it's possible to receive the QO100 satellite using a Sky TV satellite dish. I think that might be possible. I've got a homemade bias T to run the LMB. The LMB is just a standard off-the-shelf Sky LMB, not one of the Sky Q ones because they will not work. Has to be one of the normal ones. So we've got the homemade bias T, which is in a Sugru tin. I should have a video on that one actually, uh, which is which has a short piece of um, a feeder to the LMB and also a short power cable hanging from it. I can actually see it from here on the um, uh, satellite dish. The satellite dish itself is a Zone 2 dish and I purchased that one from Amazon. I'll pop a link to that in the video description below if you're interested in a satellite dish. Whether you want it for its intended purpose or whether you might want to try it on QO100 though there's no guarantee this is going to work. The receiver in question will be my Nuelec Any SDR Smart and that will be plugged into my Hi10 Air tablet with its keyboard dock plugged in I would imagine. I might use an ex a USB extension cable for that. I've got some RG213 down in the car and some RG Mini 8 which should keep the losses down coming out of the out of the LNB. So it should be around about 700 and some megahertz. It depends on which frequency frequency range I'm on, because the downlink from Q100 is roughly about 10.489 gigahertz, roughly. I haven't got the full frequency plan in front of me for the satellite at the moment. So it's just a standard LMB, no modifications done to it. Um, the satellite dish is just what you would just use to receive Sky and FreeSat with. The pole that it's on is just for mounting uh, television aerials. And uh, I think you can probably mount a Diamond X50 on it as well if you put your mind to that. Because I don't think that's too heavy. So, there is that's all bolted up together ready to go. Although, obviously I've got to adjust and point the dish actually at the satellite. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So I've got to adjust things like the skew. Well, the skew should already be set. It's just um, just tilting the dish up and down. The skew is um, uh, adjusted by turning the LMB within its holder, and it's on position three, if I recall. Which apparently, um, uh, when I looked it up, it should be roughly the same setting as for the Astro satellites. Although I could be wrong, but that's what I found on the internet. So. So I won't be using uh, the SDR Sharp software because that, for whatever reason, isn't working for me at the moment. It's refusing to acknowledge that this is connected. So I'll be using a different SDR software, which actually would be easier for me to tune, tune to the satellite with. So all I've got to do is listen for the beacons and adjust the dish accordingly. The signal probably will drift, but I think the software might try and lock it. So should be okay but I don't know. So I'll be going up to my old radio testing ground at the Washington Road end of Richmond Old Racecourse with the dish and with and with the, the tablet and I'll be powering the, L, the LMB using the bias T supplying it with 12 volts from my car. I do have a lead in the car that's one end is a cigarette lighter plug at the other end is terminated in Anderson power poles and the output on the bias T I have put Anderson power poles on as well. So hopefully everything should should be should still be working. I don't know yet because I know I know the bias T is working now, 
but I don't know if moving it would make it not work. I could have done it yesterday, but it was was raining on and off yesterday, and I also had other things to be doing. So, hopefully, after I finish filming this, I'll be able to get everything I need, and then I'll be able to set off for the Washington Road end of Richmond Old Racecourse, and hopefully no one will complain that I'm up there pointing a satellite dish about. Uh, I might get some questions asked, but hey, you know, I'll just say, oh, it's a little amateur radio project. Uh, the But I get a lot of questions about that. I get questions about the antennas on my car sometimes as well, so, you know. <laughs> right, so, what, so, all I need is, I just need to, probably need to take with me some tools, well, uh, specifically um, a spanner to adjust the satellite dish properly. So, I'm, I'm, also, we're on a new tripod today, and that's at the lowest setting for this camera. And that's actually pretty good, so I can have the tripod a wee bit higher than I would like, if I wanted, or lower. So, I'm going to swap over to the, the other camera, or maybe my phone, depending on whether the other camera's got enough space on the SD card and enough charge in the battery. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to head up to the old... The old race course in Richmond and the Washington Road end, because I can actually bungee cord the post that to a post. Yeah, right, I'll catch you then. Okay, you join me in the car. I've got the tablet on and SDR console running, which has this helpful, I'm not sure you can see it because the sun's shining a bit off this, this very helpful geostationary satellite beacon feature at the side. Now that's only really applicable to the satellite that we're interested in at the moment because it's the only geostationary satellite that the amateur radio operators have access to. And that's uh, that's the QO100 satellite. So that's the one we're looking at today. It's in SSB mode, upper sideband, I believe it is at the moment. Uh, so I've just got to keep fiddling until I can get an adjustment. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pole out into the mast stand, bungee cord it to my wing mirror and I'm going to try and, and uh, see how I can get this working because obviously I've got to put the dish on and see how I can get it working and see where we go from there so I'm just going to turn the car off for the moment because I'm going completely off because I don't need it on at the moment I need to try and conserve the battery because I think the battery is starting to go and that's a bit of a concern so you also might notice there's a spike on the on the display there, and that's an artifact of the SDRs, nothing I can do. I've got coffee and a donut from a well-known fast food fast food chain. So I've got something just to keep me going. While well, I try and see if it's possible to get QO 100 on the cheap. So remember, the satellite dish is probably was probably about £25, I think it was. Um I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but I will put a link to it. Um, it didn't come with an LMB. I bought that. Well, I didn't buy that separately. I scavenged it. But you, but you probably have to buy that separately, or you can buy a dish with with the LMB for a little bit more. Um, the bias T I built myself. The SDR I already had knocking about. The tablet, obviously, I'd already had knocking about. So I've always got a computer these days. Uh, and I'm using a NE SDR Smart, which is an RTL SDR derivative. So. I've got a video all about that, SDR. And I've got a nice bag of RF adapters as well, which I already had lying about, because I'm going to need those for my for my connecting up. Because uh, it's, it's a BNC connector on the on the bias T, and it's... Uh, uh, what's on the other end of that? It's, uh, yeah, it's a PL259 on the coax, and uh, it's an SMA on the SDR, and there's already an uh, SMA to SO239 on that. It's just trying to remember how it was all connected there. So I'm going to get go get that all set up and going. So I'll catch you in the next bit when hopefully we'll be receiving something. Okay, so here's what, what we've got. So this is just a normal off-the-shelf Sky TV satellite dish. It's got this LNB on it. That's a visible wave LNB that Sky normally supply just for their normal service, not their Sky Q service which unfortunately their SkyQ service is replacing 
the normal the normal service, although these things are still supplied for use with FreeSat because the Sky QLMBs don't actually work with that. And they wouldn't work with this either. So yeah, it's just a Sky LMB. It's bias T in that box, running power into the car, coax into the car. It's the dish itself. I'm stood right in the way of it, so it's probably going to lose the signal, but it should reacquire it. No problem at all. So, let's go and have a look at what I'm actually receiving. Okay, so this is the waterfall display of the signals received from QO100. Unfortunately, the LMB is suffering from a lot of drift. And, unfortunately, I don't think there's a lot I can actually do about that. However, it does prove that you can receive the signals from the QO100 satellite using just a normal Sky LNB. However, as can be seen here, that's drifted slightly off frequency. If I go for another frequency, let's go for the beacon, which is, I believe, here. That's a good way of telling if there's drift. There you go. You can hear the change in note from the beacon as the frequency drifts. And that should be rock steady, but it's not. Unfortunately. Apparently, if I go into this thing, it should correct. But it hasn't done. Some nice strong signals on the satellite, though. So, if I go over here. Yeah, I'm impressed with that. It's actually worked, but not as brilliantly as I would have thought. So, what we'll do now is we'll go back to the shack, once I've taken all the satellite dish and everything down, and we'll draw a conclusion there. So, I'll catch you back at home in the shack. Yeah, you can just hear that. You can hear the note change there, the tone. So, I will take this all down, and we'll go back on. Right, so what can I conclude from, from this little exercise? Well, I can conclude that it is indeed possible to use a normal Sky TV satellite dish and LNB, that was a visible wave quad output LNB, um, to receive the QO100 satellite. The only drawback with it is, as I mentioned earlier there in the video, is that it's drifting. It, the LMB is drifting. So I was bringing the dish because I actually have the dish to hand here. It's a wee bit heavy. So this is the dish I used. This is a Zone 2 satellite dish. And the LMB is there. And you should also be able to see the bias T that was used to power it which was being powered from my car cigarette lighter socket to give it the 12 volts it needed. Let's see if I can put this back on the floor without damaging the dish. There we go, and that's the dish back on the floor without me breaking it because I don't want to damage it because the dish is fine for the job. It's just this LNB that might be questionable. So I'm going to do some further research into it and maybe try again and see if I can get it to be a little bit more stable because it really was drifting and there wasn't really anything I could do to stop it from drifting so it's probably that LNB it's not really designed for what I was doing with it it was only really designed to receive Sky Television but and also FreeSat from the from the Astra 2 satellite constellation that's all it's really really was made for they didn't have this use for it in mind. So, but the dish is perfectly fine for the job, at least here in the northeast of England. Um, and it, it is working to receive the signals. The Newelec NESDR Smart performed flawlessly. 
not a problem with it at all. And what more can I say there really? Is that that's actually um, uh, inexpensive because most people will already have an SDR by now. Not everybody does, but most people do. I wouldn't recommend using just the plastic cased RTL SDRs because they, they drift as well and that would make the situation far worse than what it is. The new Elec Any SDR Smart uh, is built in such a way that it doesn't drift. The problem with these LMBs is that they drift um, uh, mostly, I'm guessing it's therm thermal stuff. So that would make things a little more awkward. So the satellite dish wasn't mounted too high. Um, that pole is a 1.8 meter pole and it, it was pointing more or less at the satellite within the, the um, uh, adjustments that I was given from the internet. I just had a look on the BATC's dish pointer and adjusted the angle on the dish to compensate and then the spikes of all the transmissions appeared. I don't think the frequency displayed was the exact frequency, obviously with this LNB being as horrifically drifty as it was, it's just kept drifting and drifting and drifting and it would not stop drifting. So there's not really a lot that can be done about that, I don't think, without taking it apart and modifying it. There may be a way to modify that, but um, it'll involve surface mount soldering that's so small that I would probably need a microscope to do it. And yeah, I'm not doing that. So I'll just buy an LMB that's a little bit more stable, that's designed for that shape of satellite dish, because the LMB and the dish shape kind of relate to each other. I couldn't use that LMB on a round satellite dish. So, there you go. So, that's actually beyond the scope of this video though. The idea of this video was to see if we could receive QO100 using a Sky TV or FreeSat satellite dish, which in this case turned out it was indeed possible to do it, although it was drifting. So, it worked. That's all I can say on that. It worked, but it was drifting. Just needs some further looking into to get the right reference. So, if I can get it to be stable, I will up, I'll put an updated video on at a later date. However, I don't think it will be stable at the moment. So, I'm going to get this one up and edited and uploaded. Yeah, if you're watching it, you'll, it'll, that's already done. Um, and all there is to do now is wish you all 7-3. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe. The thumbs up for always, is always good. If, if you don't like it, there's always the other one, the thumbs down, but that's entirely up to you. So keep, keep yourselves all safe out there, guys. And obviously, we're starting to get the winter and we still haven't shook off the pandemic. So, you know, just keep yourselves safe and safe and, you, you know, if you have to stay in to self-isolate, get yourself on the radio, get yourself on the air, and don't feel isolated while you're isolating. I always say this, and I always promote the radio as a good way to keep in touch with everybody in the outside world whilst you're having to isolate because of the coronavirus. So, yes, we're obviously still in the pandemic at the time of filming this. So, as I say, keep yourself safe, and I'll catch you in the next video. So, seven threes for now, guys. And the next video, hopefully, will be a little bit sooner than this one's been. Like I say, it's been a little bit busy. Sound for now, guys. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be notified of new videos as I upload them. Sound free from Paul, Mike, Zero, Whiskey, November, Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango, 730 on 11 meters and PMR 446.